Hi everyone. So in this video, we will discuss about how we can do gene expression analysis by using the public database. Well, as you know that gene expression analysis is a study of how genes are transcribed to synthesize, uh, like to synthesize the functional RNA or the proteins, because that can give you the phenotype and which can provide the insights into a uh, cellular process and the disease mechanism. And this analysis can uh, identify the gene expression uh, differences uh, across the different groups and that can lead to potential biomarker uh, biomarker analysis or even uh, you can find out some potential target and to and that can also uh, let us help to understand uh, what is going on around the different uh, control and experimental group. And this analysis can identify the gene expression uh, differences and that can lead to like potential biomarker and uh, and we can understand what kind of phenotype is being regulated and this technique like uh, rna sequencing which we often refer to as rna seq and uh, micro rna's then q q rt pcr quantitative re reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction which are often uh, referred to as like rt pcr or real time pcr uh, real time pcr and they offer a unique benefits uh, because this RNA seq, for for example, that can detect both known and novel transcripts, uh, while the microarrays allow for high throughput analysis of known genes. Like if you have like a certain set of genes, you can analyze those. Well, and this has a wide application in the biomedical research field and even in the pharmaceutical industry. And this has a vast uh, applications even in like like some specific uh, research type, including in the cancer research, where it helps in tumor classification and understanding the molecular subtype and uh, to understand the disease progression. And that can uh, also help in identifying biomarkers for various diseases uh, that can contribute to like uh, precision medicines or even personalized, personalized gene therapy. Well, in this scenario, uh, often we confront with a lot of challenges due to the uh, resource limit, due to the uh, limited resource availability. For example, uh, the cost of the uh, the cost of the primers, or even the cost of the uh, this uh, involved this reagents, which are used for this RT PCR experiment, those are costly, and uh, in some of the countries, it, uh, it is difficult to procure, and also it is not suggestive to repeat like what those experiment which has already been done by several different groups and if it is well established so in that case it is always recommended to examine uh, certain certain uh, uh, certain already public database uh, uh, or gene expression data set to examine uh, your particular target gene and how this has been changing across different uh, landscape so uh, in that scenario, the NCBI public database is value is a valuable resource for gene expression analysis. It provides access to vast array of genetic uh, data, uh, including the microarray and RNA seq data, which like we can use to compare and analyze the gene expression profiles. Uh, profiles and this can help to identify gene expression patterns and the discovery of novel biomarkers that can. Uh, lead to our understanding of complex biological process and the pathological states. And the database supports uh, uh, like offering tools and even it has like a resource for the data analysis and that can help in indispensable assets in the genomic research. And for example, in this video, I will be, so, I will be showing you uh, a live example, how you can use the NCBI in database to uh, to analyze your target gene in from by using the public database. So I'll just share my screen to you and I'll show how you can use the NCBI tool to analyze uh, the gene expression of or to expression uh, level of any genes in in uh, in a given condition depending on the experimental goal what the people have already done. So I'll share here. So here uh, I will show you how you can go to the NCBI website. For example, you can open this uh, website called NCBI. And here you can click, for example, here I have already uh, searched one of the, this every data set has certain genes, uh, uh, genes gene and uh, gene expression omnibus accessor number. So with that, you can identify a particular uh, 
a particular uh, this uh, data set so for example here i am uh, here i am sharing uh, with you one of the data set where they have used the single cell transcriptomics of human human and mouse lung cancer that reveals myeloid population across individuals and species so this is a single cell uh, uh, transcriptomic data from the human as well as mouse uh, lung cancer and it has it, they have a, actually in this paper they have uh, basically revealed the myeloid population how they are being uh, diversified so here you can see when the what's the summary of this paper uh, and even the overall design what kind of uh, experimental design they have for example they have done single cell rna sequencing or even the uh, of this rvc depleted cells from non small cell lung tumor and and uh, uh, and from blood of seven patients. Here also they have single cell, single cell RNA seq of CD45 positive cells from lungs uh, of two healthy mice and two lung tumor mice. Here you can also see you know, where which where this paper has been published. The paper which is related with this uh, particular data set. The these are the authors who have generated this data. Uh, so you, you can see who all have contributed and then you can also see the exact citation of that paper. For example, here you can see the PubMed ID and even uh, who all have funded this project. For example, here you can see that this has been funded by various uh, uh, groups, including this Mass General Hospital, and the, uh, which are which is an affiliated hospital of the Howard Medical School and even Beth Israel. So and when it was submitted like 20, 25, 28th February and all these things they have given here and similarly you can even uh, go and check many other data set and here you can even find like what all samples are available so for each patient like tumor tumor group you can see like there are different uh, like there are different uh, uh, data set of this single cells uh, rna seq data uh, for example, they have used like tumor uh, tissue and even they have used this blood sample. And so I'll show you a very simple, uh, for, from the very beginning, I'll show you. For example, first of all, uh, because this has been chosen before, so you have to go to this GEO, Gene, Gene Enrichment Omnibus. And here you can suppose, you can check any kind of, suppose you are finding any of the, suppose uh, I, I'm going to check something related with uh, this, uh, cancer suppose let it be brain cancer like glioma glioma is technically referred as uh, is, is a technical term for this brain cancer so here you can see there are like uh, almost uh, 109,896 uh, data sets are available so you can click over this link then again you can see there are huge number of data sets available so from there you can search like which are like human or even the mouse or even rat or there are many other species for example let it be we will consider it for human so we searched for human and then all the all the data set they have now narrowed it down to human human sample now uh, you can see there are many different data sets for example here they have used uh, certain uh, glioma from this mutant group and other like diffuse midline glioma with prognostic significance. Next is they have another another data set you can see when it was published. So if you open this one, it, you can find the details about this for each of this uh, data. Now let's uh, see on this one. So here you can see that uh, this medulloblastoma, uh, this is also another kind of like a brain cancer and then then there is another rna seq facilitates quantitative analysis of glioma stem cells with or without uh, dbc amp treatment transcriptome and uh, then again you can find many other data set like tumor associated microglia secret extracellular atp to support glioblastoma progression and similarly you can see the, so even you can see the accessor number here okay and uh, see uh, you can see even this cerebrovascular in brain malignancy and like 13 surgical and they have even the accessor number here and uh, so in the in this way you can find 
So in the in this way, you can find as many as possible data set, and you can find huge number of data set. And suppose we can uh, choose any of these depending on our requirement. So let's say I, I, if I choose this particular, this is where this seems to be a very interesting study. Like they have done synergistic combination therapies involving rig rigorafenib in experimental glioma based on genome wide crispr cas9 functional screening so they have done a crispr cas9 bus function based functional study uh, and for example here we can see uh, they have like well, so let's let's see this one in in detail so here we can see that uh, so here we can see that uh, uh, here is the summary of this paper and even uh, what all cell line they have used okay and uh, even you can see it was oh it was it's it's it was published very recently like in august 21st august 21st so they have done crispr cas9 based functional screening and then uh, this was uh, this is contributed by mark dj taba 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 from uh, which university you can see the organization name here Hearty institute for clinical brain research and you can see there are total 24 numbers, total 24 samples here you have. And so you can uh, do the analysis of your uh, required gene. For example, here, let's say, so for that, you have to just click this analyze with GEO2R. So this is, this is one of the tool provided uh, by NCBI. And this is a very important tool, which where uh, everything has been processed and you don't have to even do processing of the data and it will save a lot of your time and you can simply go to this geo tour so you can see that there are how many different groups are available like you can see like glioma and then even among glioma there are many different kind of treatment group for example dmso they have used as so a control group dmso and then one of the drug regorafenib they have used so uh, after going this uh, going here you can uh, use the, you can define the group so suppose you can you have like one is control and the control name is dmso suppose okay so we will keep it a very simple way and uh, we'll click enter the another group is suppose the experimental group so we'll write it as a expt and what's the name of that drug uh re rego rafenib okay so we will put it as a regular finim. So there are two different groups. So let's uh, select all those control groups. So this is DMSO, 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 DMSO. All these you have to click. Okay. And after uh, selecting all these DMSO, you have to click here. So all these eight samples have been selected. And the remaining uh, samples, uh, which are like treatment group, that is regular uh, finim. We will select the, them and we'll select all one by all of them one by one. And then we will click the uh, this experimental group, regorafenib. So total eight control and seven experimental group. That's what we have from this uh, study. So let's analyze. So here you can click GEO2R and you can click analyze. And it will give you all the overexpression and down overexpressed and down uh, down regulated genes. So the top overexpressed, it will make uh, one kind, a kind of plot, which is offer, often referred as a volcano plot. So uh, very soon we're gonna see that plot here. And uh, with that plot, you can identify what are the top upregulated genes and what are the top downregulated genes. And also you will get the statistical value and the log to fold change, all of these uh, top differentially expressed genes you can find here. So uh, this, figure shows you a volcano plot and you can see the, the top upregulated genes are shown in the red color and the top uh, downregulated genes are shown in this blue color. So interestingly, with this particular uh, uh, data, you can identify what are the top upregulated genes and what are the top downregulated genes. And with the top uh, with the top upregulated genes, you uh, definitely uh, some of them might have some functions and you can identify whether those genes really have some kind of function for that you have to uh, do some kind of uh, knockdown study or even the knockout study using the CRISPR-Cas. So here you can see that uh, 
uh, the, this blue color shows the top down regulated genes and this red color. So let's explore. So you can even, there is explore function as, as well. For example, you can explore here. You can click this explore and you can find which gene is highly upregulated. For example, here you can see the name is NET. If you click here and you can see the gene symbol name NET and what's its expression level, its expression level is 0.896 and this is the p-value. Uh, and then the gene ID symbol, all these things you will get here. Then let's see, suppose this one, what's the top down regulator? PLD3. PLD3. Okay. So in this way, you can identify what's the top up regulator and top down regulator genes. And next we will uh, see uh, our, for example, we want to examine our own uh, our own uh, uh, this target gene. So as as we know that uh, gap DH gap DH is one of the housekeeping gene which uh, which doesn't uh, change depending on the condition very significantly it doesn't change and so let's check the gap DH or even we can check the beta actin. So let's start for the gap DH G A P D H that's the symbol gene symbol for gap DH and click enter. So very interestingly, we can see what's the experimental uh, expression level and what's the control experiment. So this is a very beautiful plot. You can use this plot. You can even you can get the values of each of these patients. This all this number uh, represents this GSM at GSM number. This represents one each of the patient. Uh, that so these are control. Uh, these are the patients which are treated with the DMS one. These are the patients which are treated with the reward of phenyl. So. In this way, you can identify the expression level of your target genes. So let's search for beta actin SCTB. So you can see, oh wow! So this is again here. You can see uh, the beta actin expression level uh, alongside the control and the experimental group. Let's search for some any other. For example, PD1. I'll search for PDL1. PDL1 is one of the uh, one of the important. A protein which is uh, uh, which is related with the immune immune system and which is an immune biomarker and we can search so uh, the pdl1 is a protein name some of some of the proteins name is differ it differs with the with its gene name so that's why if if even if you cannot find for example here i'll search pdl1 so it's it is not showing you know so you have to know that certain certain uh, protein names are diff are different with their gene names. Generally, the uh, generally it is same, but in some cases it is different. So basically, I know that PDL one has a different uh, different gene names so that is called CD two seventy four. So uh, here you can see that how. Uh, the expression level of CD274 is, is changing along the control and the experimental group. So you might be wondering how we can know that if it has like certain uh, same name or different name. So in case if you don't find certain protein names in this uh, particular uh, profile, you can go to this uh, website called Gene Card. Gene Card. Go to Gene Card and you can gene card so you can go to gene cards and uh, you can find suppose as i told that pdl1 i knew already that pdl1 and cd274 so i will click here and you'll get this cd to send the first one see you can again click this and again search that in detail some there are some other synonyms for example pdl1 has this uh, gene name cd274 so you have to remember see there here pdl1 is in so, and it also has different other name B7H1. Generally, two, CD274 is widely used. So, if at all you have any issues with certain uh, gene symbol name, you can search it search it back from this gene card, gene card website. And there are many other websites where you can find out. So, with this way, uh, again, we'll go back to this website. So, in this way, you can identify uh, what's the expression level of, uh, of your uh, target gene along the control and experimental group and even in the individual sample here the sample is patient each patient so each of these numbers represent one patient so it's a very good way to profile your uh, gene expression 
along the control and experimental group, how it is changing, how its landscape is changing. So I hope uh, with this video, you might be able to grasp the technique, like to how you can uh, use the NCBI website, how you can use the NCBI uh, website to, uh, I, to examine the expression level of your target genes. Uh, I hope you like the video. Thank you.